Hello, here I want to show you an interesting fact about the kinematics of the mandibula. It is often claimed in textbooks that in the first 10 mm of opening of the jaw it is a pure rotation and that an axis can be determined that goes through the condyles which is the pure rotational axis of this first movement. Sometimes you also find other values like the first 25 millimeters of incisal opening. I want to show you why this is not as simple and actually in many cases not true. The condyle is not a ball. It has a, an irregular shape and the opening movement always consists of a rotation and a translation. And when a rotation and translation takes place, then the resulting axis through which you can close the situation again to the same position is a virtual axis, and that is moving in space, always depending on how much translation and how much rotation. It can be visualized simply by this method here, with this uh, pattern, can imagine that there is one pattern attached to the skull and the other one is attached to the mandibula. And when I make a pure rotation, then all of these patterns will move. Imagine this as a transparent sheet with this pattern printed on top of it. And only the point closest to the rotational axis is only rotating, so it will not be moved. This would be a pure rotation here. And the moment there is also a translation, that axis, that point that uh, will only rotate, moves away from the joint, roughly in the direction of the mastoid, downwards and back, actually perpendicular to the direction of the translation. Exactly where this virtual axis is moving depends on the angulation of the translation, that is the inclination, the sagittal inclination of the path of the joint. So in the case that the patient exhibits such a combined translation and rotation, then you find for each opening, for each amount of opening, a certain axis through which you can close back again by pure rotation. That is what an articulator would do. Because an articulator, a mechanical articulator, cannot really well do translation and rotation together. We have those condyles that rotate in the housings. Here you see different examples to where the axis would go and you also see that during an opening, as the inclination of uh, the path of uh, the condyle is changing, this axis is always moving in space. And by pure rotation you can always bring it back to its original position, but uh, always only for a certain amount of opening. This is the reason why it's never a good idea to change the vertical dimension in an articulator, which is a pure rotation, and it will not reproduce this combined movement. I show you this here in the Axiocomp software of SIM. This feature will be available in a separate module, where the scans of the patient are imported together with the Axioquick recorded data, and we can visualize this together. And the blue line that you see is now this virtual axis. And you see that this axis is moving in space dynamically as the movement takes place. And the very initial state, it does some strange things because also minor changes go into the calculation. So that can be neglected. Here again, this is a case where we have an axis which stays quite close to the condyles in the initial 10 millimeters, maybe, and then as the translation takes place, it moves away. And here again, in the first 10 millimeters, it's quite okay. And also, interestingly, it then moves 
away when closing. At closing it moves to the back. Uh, that seems to be a pure translation in the end, which also makes sense that the teeth close evenly. They have a closing angle of about 85 or 90 degrees, so they don't rotate together, but they approximate in a more horizontal way. It was Schuttle who described this, this closing angle and um, yeah, it's quite well visible here. Now this is the same case, a little bit slower, uh, frame by frame, and you see how the blue line always moves in space, and that would be where the axis of, or the condyles of a mechanical articulator would have to be if you want to change the vertical dimension. Let's have a look at another case. This is also one of the examples where in the beginning the axis stays quite close to the condyles or within the condyles and the more the patient opens the more it moves away. And another case. Here you see that this also can show some strange things, that when a retrusive, surtrusive movement happens in the condyles, the axis can also move anterior and then it moves downwards. In this case it doesn't move so far uh, to the posterior. So each patient is different, anatomies are different and it's not valid to simplify uh, the whole kinematics of patient jaws to these mechanistic simple views and state that uh, an axis can be defined or rotations. This is an interesting case. Um, again, in the beginning we are quite close, but here you see already at opening that the axis first is far behind, indicating that the jaws open in a more parallel way. And then here the axis stays quite close to the condyles, then starts moving away with the translation. Finally, a case where the axis doesn't stay in the condyles. It is far away from the beginning. In such a case you will not be able to determine an individual axis <clears throat> by axiography on the patient because he does a parallel opening and translation from the first millisecond on Yeah, I hope you found this interesting and uh, understand some more about mandibular kinematics. The clinical implication is that try always to avoid to change uh, the vertical dimension in an articulator. Um, that means when I do splints, for example, I take my bite already in an open position, so I'm closer to the position where the splint will be inserted and actually I have very few corrections to do on my splints as I don't give the lab two models in full intercuspidation and let them open then the bite in the articulator. Thank you very much for your attention.